Greg from Grand Teton Harley Davidson. We just got back from Sturgis. It was a first for me. Might as well have been a first for Jim. It's been 20 years since he's been there. And Cody and Parts, a first oh, yeah. time at Sturgis for you as well. So we're gonna talk to you a little bit about what we experienced, what the things you could expect from Sturgis as well. I honestly didn't know if I wanted to ever go, but I'm glad I did and want to go back. So I wasn't sure what to fully expect from Sturgis. Um, Jim, I know you've been there. Cody, it was a first for you, but you see pictures and videos and different things. I mean, did it meet your expectations? Or was it similar to what it was like 20 years ago, Jim? I think the perception was when I went then and when I went now, it was just a big party and there's so much more to it. The riding is incredible, but the, the expression, there's so many different bikes from so many different walks of life, so many different people that express themselves through their bikes and through their groups, just trying to to absorb it all and take it all in. It's hard to meet that expectation because it's so overwhelming, there's so much. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of hard to describe. I kind of had these expectations too, because there again, I think you see kind of the wild part of Sturgis yeah. that's portrayed out there. And so it's like, hey, is that what we're gonna walk into? Like you say, it's people from all walks of life that are there. So Cody, how about you? Did it meet your expectations? Yeah, I mean, it, it was just a beautiful place and there was an aspect for everybody, no matter what your hobby was or what part of the motorcycle you like, whether it was the customization, whether it was ride, whether it was the racing, whether it was the stunts. It's like, I understand why people go there now. I think one of the things that really struck me is just how many motorcycles are there too. I've been to a couple of other rallies. There's nothing quite like Sturgis. No, and it's truly the Mecca, and right? Like four or 500,000 people descending on this small little area all at once. And all there to have a good time. I don't recall one instance of any animosity, any, any trouble. Everybody was just there and happy to be there and happy to, to show off their bikes or experience, whatever. Just trying to take it all in was, it was crazy. Yeah, it's pretty wild. I mean, we, you could set up in multiple places kind of around Sturgis and Sturgis itself, right? And just kind of people watch. Um, for miles. And, and like his, for miles, yeah, it's people like, from everywhere. 10 miles that way, 10 miles that way, 10 miles that way, 10 miles that way, you will just see thousands of bikes every direction. But the thing I, I'd like that you touched on, Jim, was like the one th great thing about the motorcycling community is the motorcycle is like the common denominator for yeah, people, right. right? It's the common thing that, you know, you know, if you see somebody riding that you both enjoy it, then they can become like this expression of your individualism as well. And you get in an environment like Sturgis and you see that individualism come through in a big way. And people, it's, it's almost like a doormat, right? A welcoming mat, because everybody there has a common denominator and they just can join together and they meet each other. It's like, oh, hey, I love what you did with this. And then immediately you just, you're making a new friend. So we, we began in the Idaho Falls store. We went up through Jackson, made a pit stop at our, our little uh, t-shirt shop up there. Went through Grand Teton National Park, south end of Yellowstone. Some good riding on the north end of the lake there. <laughs> Passed through Cody, Wyoming, through the Bighorns, and right. Sheridan was our first stop. Uh, so a long day, yeah. uh, but some, you know, I've ridden through the parks multiple times, but I actually hadn't through, been through the Bighorn Mountains. That was the first for me. I thought the Bighorns were incredible. It's, it's been years for me. It's been a minute, and you know, it's just, you start glancing at the everywhere. It's just like, oh, there's a mountain. What's up there, right? It's just windy and nice. When we got to the Bighorns, I, I literally just slowed down just to try to take it all in. You know, you think mountain, every mountain pass is the same, but it's, it was completely different. It really felt like we had that mountain to ourselves too. I mean, yeah. we got in there, not right as the sun was going down. We maybe had an hour left of sunlight, right? And not anybody really on the road. And I know Cody, you got after it a bit. I got, we yeah, all I mean, got we after just, a bit, right? You got to stretch your legs, you know, yeah. wake up a little bit. It's a long days of riding. And just was sharing some pavement with some animals. I tell you that. <laughs> what animals? <laughs> <laughs> right. So Sheridan was a cool little town. I know we rolled in uh, right as the sun was going down. Day two, we got up and uh, we're planning to hit uh, Devil's Tower on our way in to, to Deadwood to kind of take in a, a little bit of a detour. Well worth well it. Well worth it. Had, had, have you guys been out there, Cody? You've been out there before? No, that's the first time I've ever ridden to Devil's Tower. Well, and the roads going into there too, you had these rolling hills, nice sweepers. Right. You could see the top of it and then it would disappear and right. then you dip down. peaks and glimpses of it. Yeah, and I could tell that we were getting closer as we got to, to that area as well because you know, the number of motorcyclists on the road just kept increasing, mm -hmm. right? As we got closer and closer to Devil's Tower and then you get to that parking lot and just see all the bikes there and you're like, okay, like we're, we're getting to Sturgis now. Yeah. yeah, because of the sheer mass of motorcyclists in the area, like people just weren't waving to each other doing the yeah. typical motorcycle wave, right? You get a nod every now and again, but everybody's like, yeah, I'm tired of doing this. <laughs> well, I think you'd just be riding with one right, right. going like this. We, we get it, we get it. <laughs> so, everybody's like, yeah. We're all here, hi everybody, that's enough. Stonehouse Saloon, was that the name of the place that we yeah. stopped out out there too? Just this 
kind of old house out there that has a saloon set up uh, during Sturgis. Right in the middle of a like like a foothill field kind of thing going. It was kind of out of place, but really cool. Bands playing. Yeah. Good. Right. I'd forgotten we got separated from Cody and Kyle <laughs> and Bill and Steve. Steve, Steve wouldn't ride on by. on by. But yeah, with all those bikers in the area, like, I mean, I just started dropping like the place that we're going to end up at, you know, kind of end right. of day because it's hard to keep together. You know, after Devil's Tower, I dipped down into Spearfish, ended up at Deadwood, and then we're like, hey, what do we do tomorrow? It's like, hey, we got to go to downtown Sturgis, right? So cool. in downtown Sturgis, we kind of just checked out some of the vendors. There's a lot of pat shops. People selling knives, leathers, those types of things. Tomahawks. But, tomahawks. <laughs> but, and like, you know, vendors selling food and stuff, but it pretty much was just people watching up and down Sturgis, right? And then on the adjacent street, which is the kind of main highway that cuts through Sturgis, that's where you had all your vendors and, you know, Harley Davidson had a big tent set up. You mentioned Vander Hall. Um, Indian, there's an Indian dealership right as you come in, but Harley Davidson there again just had the clustering of people kind of around their display. Anyway, we had to see it once. I think a couple guys went back again later on, um, but uh, we'd kind of seen it and said, hey, let's move on to the chip, right? And so we went out to the Buffalo Chip, which is just outside of town. I actually felt like, I thought it felt like a raceway when we got there as opposed to a concert venue and... With the campers and stuff yeah. out there, right? And all the bikes rolling in. You know, the chip did have like a free area and a paid area. We kind of got there and in between events so didn't go into the paid area we're in the free area there were you know some some bikes on display some vendors i know some of the guys picked up knives jim you got a nice like automatic knife there um, there's you know motorcycle washes going on some places to get drinks but we were kind of in between events there so not a lot going on but it, it was kind of cool just to see there again the spectacle of it all in terms of just the campers and the right. bikes rolling in and it's hard to miss. Like you can't miss it coming out of town because there's this big iron like buffalo. Yeah, right. Just it says it. chip <laughs> right below it. So I was a little bit worried. Like, hey, are we gonna find this place? I'm, no, that that's definitely yeah. over there. Right? Mark. Yeah. But it seemed like a lot of the activities were going on around, you know, kind of the noon time frame. Then they kind of get everybody out of there. And then from like 8 to like 2 a.m. in the morning, 8 p.m. to like 2 a.m. in the morning, that's when things were going again. They had a lot of cool stuff there still, even during the day. And mountains of tires, right? right. Like tons of people. Oh, used with, oh, yeah. You know, that was kind of just day one of Sturgis itself, right? Um, so the next day, we decided to go riding. We went to... Uh, Rushmore came in from the east side, if I'm not mistaken. And so we got the full breadth of right. it. You know, so it's you like, you because the... you're looking for it the entire time. You're like, all right, well, I'm seeing mountains. It's like, and when you don't know where it's at, you're just like, one of these is just going to be a face. It was amazing. And like, I, re yeah. I remember being in front of the faces 20 years ago and being, yeah. and, and it's awesome. It's incredible. The sweeper that we came around where all the bikes were parked on the right side of the road. And then they were just, they were right there. And we weren't yeah. actually like in the park yet. That was pretty incredible to get that perspective of it. And then get to kind of mosey into the park and then kind of have it all revealed to you. But that's pretty amazing when you come out of Keystone from the east side. And like you mentioned, like, you know, you're not quite sure where it is. You got, you're like, hey, it's close. I'm yeah, you're getting that. excited and you're yeah, just scanning excited. the horizon and trying to pay attention to where you're riding. And then you do, you come around this sweeper and there it is, right? And mm -hmm. like you say, all the motorcyclists are parked along the, the road, taking pictures. They even like set up an outhouse because so many people were stopping, right? Unfortunately, we saw somebody dump his bike too, like <laughs> yeah, trying to get out of there. Right. Yeah. So you gotta be careful. Yeah, for those that hadn't seen it, and I've, I've seen Rushmore before, but you know, I was just, I was impressed again. Like it's, it's something worth seeing if you're in the area. Crazy Horse as well, right? Yeah, and that's I mean, where we went next, right? Crazy Horse. So Crazy Horse is only, I think, 16 miles down the road. It was pretty close. Yeah, it, it seemed pretty quick to get there. Yeah, they have the whole like Native American uh, cultural center there. Impressive to see it. And I had much, as much fun just kind of checking out the film that they had there, the little cultural center, and right. a lot of the artifacts that they had on display from you know the indigenous people in the area. So that put us like right next to Custer State Park. So we came in from the west side, and there's a couple of like really iconic roads in Custer State Park, and. Unfortunately, we were running out of time to hit them both. So there's Needles Highway, right. and then there was Iron Mountain Road. And I was, as I was looking at the map, I'm like, we have to hit Iron Mountain Road <laughs> because <laughs> it had more twisties than Needles right. Highway. I'm sure Needles Highway is fantastic too, but we'll have to hit that again. But Cody, do you want to describe like Iron Mountain Road and what that was like? It was beautiful. Simple answer for that. I mean, it, I loved every bit of it. Yeah, everything from the lakes and the ride to it, the lakes and the small towns we went through to, to the part where it divided. And it was like a little, it was like almost like we were riding our motorcycles on right. a car path. Yeah. Right? And then then into the pigtail bridges and, and the tunnels. It's an engineering spectacle and a lot of fun to ride. 
Yeah, I think that last tunnel in, in particular, like it had Mount Rushmore just framed perfectly mm -hmm. right at the end. I know I was lagging back quite a bit trying to wait for a car to get out of the way. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, some of the guys in the back, I think that would have been looked spectacular with the row of bikes. Man, I want to go faster there because it's fun. It's like those are sharp, tight weaves, and it's like, man, I can bank this, I can lean hard. And, but it's like, I want to slow down and look at everything too. But there are police everywhere. Yes. Do, don't be yeah, careful. Don't. <laughs> Lots of police around. You know, from what I understand, the, the sheriff in the area pulls police from all sorts of states just for this event. I mean, there are again, four to 500,000 people descending on these small towns. They were watching for speeding. I don't think I looked down at my speedometer so much because I normally just ride as I did around mm -hmm. there because you see people pulled over. Um, you know, I was coming to a complete stop most of the time, put my feet down. Uh, South Dakota, I believe, has like a, an eyewear um, law as well, where you have to have eye protection on, hmm. at least. Not a helmet, but at least eye protection. So, was watching that. So last day, Danger Dan joined us for breakfast, letting us know about his experiences on the Pan America Trail. He's currently driving his Harley Davidson Pan America on the Pan America Trail. He left mm -hmm. it in Ecuador. We've got more to come on our interview with him and his travels. We kind of figured we were going to visit Full Throttle because we were out there, but there was so much to see right. with the from the tables that they built and how they built the the sound set for the the sound engineers yeah. that worked up there, yeah, yeah, and the bar, and it was all just art, right? Yeah. And since there was so much to see, we didn't actually get there until the last day. But let's get to like, what was your favorite thing at Sturgis? Cody, if you had to pick just one thing, what was your favorite thing there? Going and finding vendors and being like, hey, this is who I am. Who are you? What do you? What cool stuff do you have? Do, is, you know, it's like, is it stuff that I like? We bring up a good point. Everybody in the industry is there. So you've talked to a lot of these folks on the phone. It's good right, for them to put a uh, face to a name. And there again, now they know you, right? Like I right, they yeah. know you from the phone. Oh, I got their know. cards and yeah. emails. It's like, hey, remember me. <laughs> <laughs> I need your help. How about you, Jim? What was the most favorite thing at Sturgis for you? You know, for me, it's uh, the camaraderie, the, the, the group of people that we took. They were just, just oh, outstanding good. people. Um, but to be able to share that with like-minded individuals and uh, to share experiences with each other, you know, at night over around the fire, having a cigar and, yeah. and uh, cooking dinner together. And that and, and the writing I thought was just phenomenal. Yeah, I think for me, the favorite thing was the writing. Like, as you know, as you guys know, I love to write. So getting out in the Black Hills, I'd been there again, but not for Sturgis, but getting out there with just literally thousands of motorcyclists and riding the hills and, you know, you get with a big group and it's like pretty soon you got 50 to 100 people that you're just kind of taking the turns right. together with. And it's fun, um, you know, you get that sense of danger, but adventure, and then the sense of community when you come together too. So uh, that, that was probably it for me. If you want more good motorcycle content, whether it's community, builds, whatever it may be, uh, please like, subscribe, follow our channel, Grand Teton Harley-Davidson.